Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning saints. Good morning. Once again, hey, hey, hey. It's a blessing once again to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 I've heard it said many, many times that you could have been anywhere else. But wherever you are, let's praise God this morning. Amen. Be it in your house, be it in your car, or maybe outside just enjoying this good sunshine. But it's just still a blessing. It's still an honor to serve God this morning. This morning, just let your heart flow. Open your mind. Let not your heart be troubled. Let not it be troubled this morning because Jesus is still in control. With everything that's going on around the world, Jesus is still in control. He's allowed it, ordained it, but you still want to magnify him this morning. You still want to lift him up this morning. From the east coast, west coast, north, south, just continue to look to the hill. What cometh your help? Because all your help cometh from the Lord. If you don't know anybody else to call, you can call on that name Jesus because no other name I know and no other person I know that can do the thing that he do Praise and all God. you got to do is just, just trust him you cannot trace his hand sometime but hallelujah. lift up your voice give him the praise Amen. shout out hallelujah 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 because my God your God yeah. no matter no matter what you're Thank doing you this Jesus. morning just magnify him this morning yeah. stand up stand up Amen. sit down Lay down, but whatever you're doing, give God the praise. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Praise God. Amen. Praise him, praise him, praise him. This morning, scripture will be coming from Psalms 19, 1 through 5. Proverbs. Proverbs. 19, 1 through 5. My fault. Amen. 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 We all get there, say amen. 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 It reads, Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is in perverse in, the, with, in his lips and is a fool. Mm. Also, that the soul be without, be without knowledge it is not good, and he that has it with feet, his feet sinneth. The foolishness of man have perverted his ways, and his heart fretted against the Lord. Mm. Wealth maketh many friends, but the poor is separated from his neighbor. Mm. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall not escape. I have read Psalms 19, 1 through 5. Amen. May God Amen. bless the to Bless the holy word, amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. As we go before you in prayer right now, Father. Father God, I come to you right now with a bow down head and a humble heart. Father God, I come boldly to your throne of grace, Father. Lord, I just need you in my life today, Father God. And I'm just so thankful right now, Father. Father God, you did it once again, Father God. You touched me this morning, Father God, with your tender finger of love, Father God. You blessed me and you woke me up this morning, Amen. Father God. Amen. Father God, you opened my eyes, Father God, so I could see, Lord. Amen. And I just want to say thank you right now, Father God. Thank, thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you for you. everyone that is watching and listening right thank now, you. Father God, for yes, you did Lord the same Jesus. thing to them, Father God. Yes, Lord. Father God, it's all because of you that we live Thank today, you, Father Lord. God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We stand amongst the living today, Father God. Yes. There's nothing that we did, Father God. It's all about you, Father God. Yes, Lord. Father God, I just thank you for your grace today, Father God. And I pray that our mercy just follows us each and every day, Father God, Amen. no matter where we're at, Father. Amen. Father God, I pray that your anointing just falls down on us each and every day, Father God. Continue to bless us with your strength and your encouragement, Father God. Yes, Lord, we need you in our lives right we now, Father. We need you, Lord. We need you. We need you. We need you. Father God, I just pray that the favor just falls upon yes, us Lord. right now, we Father God. You this Praise morning, God. Jesus. Amen. We lift you up. I thank we you right now, Father you. God, and every yes, day and all thank day, you. Father. We thank Amen. you. I pray that you just continue to be a lamp to my feet, Father God, and a light to my path, Father God. God. We're praying, praying without man. ceasing. Bless me right now, Father God, as I Prop give me up on all sides this morning, God.
continue to be my teacher, Father God, my guide, Father yes, God. Lord. Help me to do your will, Father yes. God. Continue not mine. to love me, Father God, in spite of, Father God. Yes, Lord. We love you, God. We love you. Yes. I just want to say thank you for that. Thank we you. We thank you and we praise thank you. you. Praise God. Amen. Thank you for blessing St. Elmo, Father Amen. God. Not only Hallelujah. today, but every day, Father God. Bless this church. Hallelujah. Continue to bless it. Touch every last one of us, Father God, and bless us with your tender mercy of love, Father God. Amen. We thank you, you know, as God. you, you bless know, our you know, finances, you know. Father God, in spite of, Father yes. God. Amen. Father God. Continue to give us the you. faith, Father God. Thank yes. you this morning. We may not see you, but we feel you, Father God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Allow each and every last one of us to get to know you better, Father Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let us worship no other name with I you, know. Father God. No other name I know. And that sweet name bless not only you. us, Father God, but bless our enemies, Father God. Yes, Lord. Touch them, Father God. Make them our footstool. Give them a God. word, Make Father God, that they get to know this you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Let them come to you, Father God, and ask what must they do to be saved today, Amen. Father God. And we'll be ever so thankful, Father. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Again, yes, Lord. Another soul Amen. Amongst your family, Father God. Father God, I pray and ask that you bless this speaker of the hour today, Father God. Yes, Lord. Bless his mighty word, Father God. Yes, and that's the tune of your ministry. Give him the anointing right now, Father God. Let his word go forward with power, clarity, and conviction, Father God, yes. and understanding and encouragement, yes, Father Lord. God. I know he's already gave you the praise for it, Father God. Praise God, amen. Father God, I pray that you continue to watch over my pastor and his family, Father God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for what you have done and will do in his life, Father God. Continue to bless him and allow him to be the leader that he is, Father God. Yes. Continue to heal him, Father God. Yes. Lord. Continue to allow him to get stronger, Father God, each and yes. every day, Father God. Thank you. Physically and mentally, Father. We yes. thank you right now, Father thank God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for already going before this service. Yes, Lord. Bless yes, Lord. Him, Father God. Amen. And we give you all the praise, all, all the, the honor, praise. and all the glory. All the glory. In Jesus' name, In Jesus I pray. Name. Amen, amen, and amen. In the name of God. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, yes. amen. Please stand by as we transition into our praise and worship. Amen. on time God yes he is yes. on time God yes he is yes he is Job said he might not come when you want him but he'll be there right on time he's the on time God yes he is 
Waking as the children of Israel mm. Come on. Trapped by the Red Sea Yes, oh, sir yeah. Why that mean old Pharaoh Woo. And his army Come on He had water all around them Yes And Pharaoh on their back But I don't know where God showed up and made a highway just like that. Woo! He's an on time God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. Woo! Job said he might not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And you can ask the 5,000. A hungry soul he fed. Yes. Down by the river with two fish and five loaves of bread. Come on, come on. What a miracle. Yes, he did. He performed for the mother too. Yes. What he did way back then, he'll do it for me and you. Yes, he will. Yes. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Woo! He's an on time God. Yes, he is. Woo! Come on now. Job said he might not come when you want him, but he'll be there at right on time. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's on time. 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 You can ask the Hebrew boys. He's on time. He's on, on time. You can He's ask Daniel. Time. He's the on time God. Yes, he is. Amen. Amen. He may be late, but he's always on time. Amen.
morning, 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 morning. Good morning, saints, wherever you are out there in listening, saying this morning. Once again, it is an honor to come to you one more time from this little old corner on Monroe where Dr. David Wayne Cavett is our pastor. Amen. Amen. So we're glad to have you with us one more time this morning. Whoever you are or whatever you are, just give God some praise this morning. Amen. Give God some praise because he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. So I just say to you, we're glad to have you with us one more time this morning. This morning, I hope that when everything is said and done, that you will have received something that you can give God the praise for. Amen. Because like I said, God is worthy to be praised. He's worthy of your praise, not just worthy to be praised. He's worthy of your praise. So I say again, we just want to thank you this morning for being with us one more time. So I hope that uh, you'll be able to stay with us this morning and do what you do best, and that's love the Lord. Amen. Because he certainly loved you, and he first loved us. Amen. He first loved us. So I know we can love him in return. Amen. 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 I don't know what I do without the Lord. I don't know what I do without the Lord. I couldn't even sing a song without the Lord. I couldn't even sing a song. Without the Lord, when I look around the sea, what the Lord has done for me, I don't know what I do without the Lord. I couldn't even preach this morning without the Lord. I couldn't even preach this morning without the Lord. When I look around, around the sea, what the Lord has done for me, I don't know what I do without the Lord. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what I do without the Lord. When I look around, around the sea, what the Lord has done for me, I don't know what I do without the Lord. What about you? What about you this morning? I don't know what I'll do without the Lord. And like the singer said this morning, he's an on-time God. He's never late. He's always on time. He may not come when you want him. I say that again. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to thee this morning in the only way that I know how, Father God, with a bowed down head and humble heart. Thanking you, dear Heavenly Father, for this day, a day that wasn't promised to any of us, Father God, but you saw fit just to touch us all this morning, wherever you are, and woke us up this morning and put breath in us, Father God. And our eyes came open, clothing us in our right mind, putting food on the table, shoes on our feet, Father God. Father God, that was all about you, Father God. It wasn't about us, Father God. It was all about you, Father God. So, Father God, as we come to you today, we're going to continue to look to the hills where cometh our help, Father God, because I know all our help cometh from you, Father God. 
Father God, as I go down this path today, Father God, and bring this word, Father God. Use me as a vessel, Father God. And if I seem a little high, Father God, I'm asking you to push me back down, Father God. And if I get a little low, I'm asking you to pick me back up, Father God, and hide me behind your cross, Father God. So that they see only you, Father God, and not me, Father God. And use me, Father God, this morning. Use me, Father God, until you use me up, Father God. That's what I want you to do. Just use me. Use me until the word, until a word, until a word reach out and touch somebody. Touch somebody this morning. Some man, woman, or child and have them to come running and say, Lord, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved, Father God? Now, Father God, that the words from my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer and each and every heart and saints within the sound of my weak voice say amen in amen amen you may be seated if you can wherever you are but there is a word this morning there is a word this morning and I do promise and I will promise that I won't be with you very long this morning I'm hate to say it, but my old mouth a little bit so I don't know if you can see it, but I got all my partials put in and they got my mouth a little so, but that's all right. That ain't no excuse that I can't bring God's word this morning because he made all this possible and I definitely want to give him his dues because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here today and neither with you. So I just want to praise him this morning the best I can. So if my words come out a little strange this morning, I'm trying to get used to something different. Amen? Amen. Because God is so good. God is so good. God is good all the time. Yes, Lord. And we just want to praise you this morning because everything that has happened in our lives, you made it all possible. Because everything that we have, Father God, belongs to you. And we thank you for your mercy this morning, your love, Father God. Just because of who you are, we are here today. And we just want to do what you want us to do on this side, and that's be a good servant. We just want to be a good servant and do the best we can to serve you, Lord. Sometimes I know we might stray and might not stay on the straight and narrow. But you know, dear Heavenly Father, when you reach down, yank us back on that path, narrow path and put us back on the right road. And for that, we just want to say thank you. Thank you. So we're going to get on. I'm not going to delay the hour this morning. You know, if you have your Bibles this morning or your phones or whatever, uh, there is a word, like I said, today, and we'll be coming out of the book of John, chapter 14, very familiar verses. Verses that I will be using this morning will be verse 5 and 6 out of John chapter 14. Amen, amen. I'll give you a couple of seconds to get there. I'll get your phones on. And if you would, uh, if you want to stand for the reading of God's word, it would be appreciated. Can you stand? God knows your heart. God knows your heart. And he knows your condition. Amen. Amen. And the word of the Lord reads, chapter 14, verse 5 and 6 reads, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. And he, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth. And the life. No one come to the Father except through me. May the Lord have a blessing on the hearers and most on the hearers and most souls and doers of His mighty and holy word, because this is word, not mine, not mine. You may be seated if you, if you will. So that is the scriptures we will be using today. And just for those of you who would like to have a subject or a topic. Title this morning will be Who Are You Gonna Call? Who Are You Gonna Call? I don't know about.
about you. But when times get hard for me and times get rough and hills get hard to climb, when I find myself climbing up the rough side of the mountain, there's no other name I know than that sweet name of Jesus the Christ. So I say to you again, my brothers and sisters and saints, believers and non-believers, Jesus is the way to the Father. Amen, amen, and amen. We're going to go on and get started. And once again, I want to thank all of you for being with us today, wherever you are, East Coast, West Coast, wherever. We just appreciate you being with us again on this Sunday morning because you could have been anywhere else than being with us this morning. My brothers and sisters, we have talked about looking for a way out now for quite some time. Almost two years, the 19th of this month, that we have preached and talked about looking for a way out. And I stand here today, my brothers and sisters, to let you know that if you don't know by now where and who to look to, then I'm going to try to help you today. I'm going to try to help you today to put in your memory bank and put on your heart who to look for and who to look to when you're looking for a way out. All right, my brothers and sisters, today we're going to focus on three things. The way, the truth, and the lie. Sometimes. We as people think that the way to the Father is a narrow way. But I beg to differ, and I'll explain to you why. Because in reality, it is wide enough for the whole world. And let me say that since I put it that way. If the world is willing, let me say again, if the world is willing to accept the Lord Jesus Christ, then he will accept you. So I say to you saints that instead of worrying and complaining about how limited the roads are and the past are to have only one way to the Father, we should be saying, thank you God for, for providing a way that is a sure way. That is a sure way. It may be narrow, but rest assured, my brothers and sisters, it's the sure way to the Father. And like I said, like I said, that path is wide enough to accept the whole world if the world accepts him. That's pretty wide. That's pretty wide. But first and foremost, you got to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. That's the way you're going to get there, through that narrow path. And like I said, he will accept the whole world if the world accepts him. And I say today, who are you, my brothers and sisters, who are you going to become? Amen. When I look at how we are to get to God, this is what I visualize. The way Jesus... The way is Jesus is our path to the Father. And as for the truth, who is the truth? Jesus is the truth. And his reality is in all his promise, everything that he prayed, God promised, we can receive it if we do his will. If we do his will, it's not about us. It's not our will. It's God's will. So when we do the will of God, then everything can be and will. All right. As for the light, Jesus, Jesus joins our divine life in both now and eternity. Jesus is in truth only the living, the only living way to the Father. He is a true and living God. He ain't dead. He's not dead. He is a true and living God. He ain't like old Buddha sitting out there. You can 
Worship Buddha if you want. See if Buddha give you anything in return. See if Buddha hear you when you call him in the morning. See if Buddha answer you in the midnight hour when you're crying out. You can, you, can, you can worship him if you want to. But let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, you get nothing. I say again, nothing in return. Nothing in return. Amen, amen. Let me move on down the road here and start getting into why we should call the name Jesus. Now look at Matthew 14, verse 22 through 32, when Jesus walked on the water. Jesus told his disciples that uh, they should go ahead ahead of him and go on and get in the boat because he wanted to be alone, to go up into the mountain and be alone and pray and meditate on to the Father. The Bible tells me that it was about in the fourth hour of the night, around oh, 3 o'clock in the morning, in the night. And the boat was about out in the middle of the sea. And Jesus appeared. Jesus appeared to his disciples walking on the water. Can you imagine about that time of morning you look out and you see something but you're not sure about what it is and you reach over to your partner and your other disciples and say, man, let me borrow your glasses because I think I see something out there but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But there's a figure out there that I need to kind of figure out what it is. <laughs> and they saw him. They thought he was what? They thought he was a ghost. They thought he was a ghost. But Jesus, Jesus immediately spoke to them and said, Be, be of good cheer. And do not, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Peter, being the bold one, said out, Lord, if that is you, bade me to come to you. Bade me to come. So bold Peter with all his faith, you know, he, he, he wasn't really testing God. He just wanted to see what was going on. And God said to him, <laughs> Peter, come. Peter got out of the boat and proceeded to walk in the water. But just as we, my brothers and sisters, sometimes when the storms and, and everything get so, so, so rough around us and times get hard and we don't know where to turn, we actually lose focus on what the main prize was in the beginning. And that's what happened to Peter. Peter lost sight of and focus on what he was supposed to do. And the, 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 the waves got so high and they began to get up around Peter, and when he lost his focus, he did what? He began to sink. And the first thing came to Peter in my mind, he said, Lord, <laughs> save me. Save me. And Jesus immediately reached out and stretched out into his hand and brought Peter back up and said, whoa, where's your faith? And he assisted Peter back and to the boat. We as Christians begin to lose, when we begin to lose the battle and times get difficult and we find ourselves in difficult situations. And I say to you today, you can still call on the name Jesus. So I say again to you, my brothers and sisters, who are you going to call in these trying times? And brothers and sisters, we are going through some trying times right now. Trying time, not just here, but all over the world. All over the world. When you look at your TV today, and sometimes I don't even turn it on, it's really a horrible situation in Ukraine. A horrible situation because of one man. One man. But guess what? God knows. He already knew this day was coming a long time ago. And I guarantee you, not only did he know he was coming, but he has a plan for the end result. We might not know it. We might not see it. It's not for us to know. But Jesus knows what the end result's going to be. All we got to do is sit back and wait and let Jesus do what he does best. 
And let's take charge of the situation. And he will. He will. In his time. In his time. He will bring this situation under control. I know he will. I know he will. And I know what I'll do. And I know what some of the people are doing. They're praying day and night. And they're calling on Jesus the Christ. Let me move on just a little bit further and look at Matthew chapter 8, verse 23 through 27. How Jesus comes. Won't he do it? He'll come the storms when you least expect it. That's when he come on your behalf. The Bible tells me that when Jesus got into the boat, the disciples followed him out into the waters, and they were about to enter into the Sea of Galilee, which was considered an unusual body of water. And I say that because otherwise uh, this body of water was a little bit unpredictable like some things are in the world today. Things can get unpredictable. Amen. Amen. After the boat got out to sea and Jesus being who he is just got over in the corner and went to sleep. Went to sleep because he wasn't worried. He wasn't worried. He knew what was going on. So he just went to sleep. <laughs> and a great storm. Can you imagine yourself out in a little old boat that holds about 12 people? And the storm came up on the water without warning. And ain't that when storms come in our lives? They come when we least expect them. Without warning. Without warning. And you look around and you ask yourself, what do I do now? What do I do now about this storm in my life? Because it approached me without any notification, without any warning. But guess what, brothers and sisters, I say to you today, as your witness, it appears to me that as the storm and the wind began to rage and the disciples had woke Jesus up, and when he woke up, and he saw, said to the disciples, uh, why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? And they said, Lord, save us. <laughs> save us. Because we are about to perish. We are about to perish. When Jesus said to the disciples, why are you so fearful? God don't want us to be a person of fear. He wants you to understand that whatever he take you into, he will certainly see you through. If you just trust him. If he take you there, he will bring you out. He will bring you out. Yes, indeed. All you got to do is continue to trust him. And Jesus, when the disciples woke him, he woke up and he arose. He arose. And Jesus arose and rebuked. <laughs> Rebuke the wind and the sea. The disciples, the disciples were so marveled and, and so amazed that they said, What? <laughs> what matter of man is this? Even the wind and the sea obey. They obey. What matter of man is this? When he can rebuke the wind and the storm. My brothers and sisters, I say to you today, when you truly understand who God really is, <laughs> not just rebuking things of nature and the storms and the trouble, which is our heart, because God knows our heart. In the time of need, and as the words say, let not your heart be troubled. Let not it be troubled, because Jesus already knows. And he can do every, anything but fail if you just let him into your life. If you just let him control your situation. Let him control your problem. Because Jesus is willing. He is willing to come into our life. All we got to do is ask him. Just ask him. He's right there. 
He never left us. Sometimes we might leave him and drift away. But Jesus is still, still right there. Right there. So I say again to you, my brothers and sisters, in these trying times, when there's trouble in your life and storms in your life, do not let your heart be troubled. Call on Jesus. So I say again today, who are you? storms are raging in your life. Just call on that sweet name of Jesus and he will see you through. And like I said before, he may not come when you want him, but Lord knows he's always on time. Because he's an old time God. Yes he is. Thank you. Yes he is. He is an old time God. Thank you Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Let me move on just a little bit further and look at Luke chapter 13, verse 10 through 17. And the Bible talks about a woman who had an infirmity. And I'm not talking about the lady with the issue of blood. I'm talking about a lady that, a woman that had, had an infirmity, had been bent over. And I know I've heard the pastor say, keep looking couldn't look up. She had been over for 18 years. 18 years. And when Jesus was passing through her city and began to preach the word, she just happened to be in the midst. And Jesus saw this lady that had been in this situation for 18 long years. And it just so happened when he was bringing the word, it was on the Sabbath. And you know, and I know that the Bible says they didn't do any work on the Sabbath. That was the day of rest. But on this particular day, Jesus laid hands on this woman. And she became healed. But the rulers didn't like it because they knowing that this was disciples day, and they said, we do not work on the disciples. But Jesus turned it over. And as the pastor said, let me turn this thing over. And he asked them, on the Sabbath, do you not, do you not untie your oxen and your donkeys and take them down to the water, to the river to drink? On the disciples, on the disciples. So if you can do that, isn't that considered work? Then why can't I not heal this woman that's been bent over for 18 long years, been bound up for 18 years? Why can't I not heal her on the cypress, on the cypress? I know I might be saying this wrong, but I'm doing the best I can. But the thing about it, understand that they want to consider Jesus a hypocrite because he was doing work on the disciples when he healed this woman that had been bound up for 18 long years. That's a long time. I know if I walk on a, a limb and got to bend over for a little bit to get under a tree, my back started to hurt. And I ain't been there for about five seconds. Can you imagine how she felt? But guess what? God made everything all right. He made everything all right. And all the woman could do was say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just call on that name. He will show up. And I say again to you, my brothers and sisters, who are you going to call when you have an illness for such a long time? I don't think the way we live today, I don't know if we could last that long. I don't know if we could. But guess what? I know somebody that knows everything about us. Knows everything about us. I coming in and I going out. Every little hair on our head. Well, some of us, you know, we ain't got no hair no more. But he knows what's down underneath there. Way underneath the skin. You still got some hair. Still got some hair. And he knows. He knows. But he healed the lady uh, that had been crippled for 18 long years. And we
we say to you, my brothers and sisters, Jesus, whatever you're doing today, if it's healing, if it's healing that you're doing today, please, please don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. So wherever you are, just call on Jesus in your crying time and trying times of need because, like I said, he's right there. He never left us. He is right there. And I heard a old saint say on TV one day, Father, I didn't leave you. I mean, you didn't leave me. I left you. Please let me come back and service your people. I slipped away for a short time, but I'm back to do your will. Not mine, but yours, your will. I let you down, but I'm asking you, Receive me back into your flock. Let me run on down the road just a little bit further and look at Luke chapter 17, verse 11 through 16. And I know when I bring to this to your attention that you will remember the pastor talking about this for several Sundays. When Jesus was passing through Jerusalem, and in the midst of Samaria and Galilee, when he entered into a city or a certain village, he noticed, <laughs> and I know this will come back to you, he noticed ten men, ten men standing for an altar. And there's a reason for these ten men to be standing so far off because they were men that had an illness called leprosy. And you and I both know that we've seen the movie many, 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 many times of what happens when people have leprosy. They got to distance themselves from everybody else because they are considered to be unclean, unclean. And when the men saw Jesus, <laughs> they shouted with a loud voice, Jesus! Master, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. <laughs> and Jesus told them to, hey, when he told them about the healing, he told them to go and show yourself to the priest. And they were healed. But guess what? Out of the ten, out of the ten, how many returned? One. Only one returned, and that one was a Samaritan. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and said, Thank you, in a loud voice. Thank you. So I said that to say this. Uh, Jesus don't care who we are, where we come from, or what we're doing, because he have no respect for person when it comes to serving him. So that's why I said that, because this one person was a Samaritan. But he still came back and fell at Jesus' feet just because he appreciated and was thankful for what the Lord had done for him. Won't he do it? I know he'll do it. He's done it for me in many occasions. I know he'll do it for you. All you got to do is trust him and ask him. Ask him, because he said in his word, I will supply all, not some, all of your needs. Just trust him. Trust him, my brothers and sisters. Call on him. Call on that sweet name of Jesus when you're looking for a way out and don't know where to turn. You turn to the right, you turn to the left, and all you find is a blockade there. But look back where he brought you from to where you are today. Because I can say today, my brother and sister, that he brought me. He brought me from a mighty, mighty long way. Brought me from a mighty long way. And he's still carrying me today. 
And I just want to continue to look forward to the mark. I don't know what the end result's going to be, but trust me, I want to run on. I want to run on and see what the end's going to be and see what God has in store for me. And like I said, the road get rough sometimes. Times get hard sometimes. I don't know where certain things are coming from sometimes. But I know one thing for sure, that I got someone that I can call on. I can call him in the morning. I can call him in the evening. I can call him in the midnight hour. His line is always open. And that great name, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus is right there waiting for you to call him. Just call him. He's a merciful on time God. Call him. He's a just God. He's too just to be unjust. Just call on that sweet name. Sweet name of Jesus. There's no other name that I know other than the name of Jesus. We're going to move on. I'm almost gone now. <laughs> When I look at Jesus Christ, Jesus, Jesus, saint unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We talked about that. No matter, no matter, and no man cometh to the Father except. Isaiah 26 and 4 says, uh, His love and His mercy is everlasting. Truth. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord is that eternal rock. Our provider, <laughs> Prince of Peace, will in the middle of the wind. No matter. Do not be in despair, my brothers and sisters. Just continue to stay on that path of God, and everything will be all right. Because his love and his mercy is not just sometime. It's everlasting. It's everlasting. Thank you, Lord. Not only that, uh, sanctify. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23, when you are sanctified by God, he sanctifies the whole being, not just <laughs> the body part, not just the religious part, but he sanctifies the whole being. And he controls not only your whole being, but your spirit and your soul because whatever he justifies, he also sanctifies. That's how God. He don't do things halfway. God does things all the way. All the way. And when he does it, no man can change it. No man can change it because it tells me that when God opens the door, no man can close it. When he closes the door, no man has the power to open it. Because when God does something, you can count on it and take it to the bank. And I look at Psalms 33 and 1. Unity. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice to be unified as one body? Many members, but one body? Hey, just the unification. David said, how good and pleasant it will be, my brothers and sisters, if we could live together in harmony and in peace. And be that positive light that sets up on the hill for the world to see that we are unified, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Because in the word tell me that a church divided <laughs> cannot stand. Cannot stand. So I say to you, my brothers and sisters, even though we are not fully back fellowshipping with one another so we can see each other day in and day out, our heart and our love can still reach out and touch someone with the telephone or uh, whatever. See them in the store. Show them some love. 
Show them some love because we are drifting apart today. The old devil is busy. I mean, he's more busy today than I think he's ever been. Because when I look around sometimes, I see him working on me. I see him working on me. And I have to get down and dig a little deeper and say, Lord, Lord, put this devil under my, make him my footstool. Make him my footstool because he kind of getting to me a little bit. Getting to me a little bit, but I know. I know you can show up and show out. And I ask him, Lord, take him away. Because when you speak, when you speak about the goodness of Jesus, that old devil got to flee. He got to get away. He can't stand it. He can't stand it. And last but not least, Philippians 3 and 20 tells me about a Savior. A Savior that we are all waiting on to return one day. Brothers and sisters, our citizenship is in heaven. <laughs> and we are eagerly waiting on our Savior to return. And we're talking about, and I'm talking about Jesus the Christ. <laughs> the one and only true and living God. While you're looking for a way out, keep looking up. Keep looking up because one day, one day, one day, he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. Will you be ready? Will you be ready when he comes? Will you be ready when he comes back? Or will you still be playing church as I heard a songwriter say, are you still going to be playing church upon his return? I don't know about you, but I want to be ready when Jesus comes. When that man come back, riding on a white horse, I want to be ready. I want to be ready in my heart, in my mind, in my soul. I want to give it all to God. Because I heard a songwriter say, and I heard a song say, Lord, give me you. If you give me you, everything else can wait. Nothing else matters. Just give me you. Just give me you. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. The man that was led from judgment hall to judgment hall. Yeah. Give me Jesus. The man that was Led before Pilate. <laughs> Pilate knew that there was no fault in this man. <laughs> so he said, bring me some water. I wash my hands of this situation. But the crowd began to shout. The crowd began to shout. Free Barabbas, crucify Jesus. Free Barabbas, but crucify my Lord. The man that had no fault, the man that has done no wrong, but still they wanted him crucified. They tell me, they tell me, they tell me that he was beaten and bruised. He was beaten and bruised for out wrongdoing. For house transgression, they tell me, they tell me that he was led, oh yeah, up that hill called Calvary. Not only was he led up that hill, but they placed him on an old rugged cross. They nailed nails in his feet. They nailed nails. In his hand. They hung him high. They hung him high. They stressed him wide. Oh yeah. They tell me. That on each side. Was two thieves. One said. One said. If you are. If you are. Who you say you are. Won't you. Won't you. Save yourself. Save yourself, 
save yourself and save us too. The other thief said, the other thief said, oh Lord, oh Lord, remember me, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. Jesus said, Jesus said, I will, I will, I will remember you. I will remember you. And when I enter into paradise, they tell me, they tell me, they tell me they hung that on that cross. They took him down. Oh, yeah. They placed him in a borrowed tomb. Oh, yeah, but I heard the preacher say, and I know the word say, that anything that you borrow, that anything that you borrow, one day, oh, one day, you got to give it back. You got to give it back. He stayed there, stayed there, stayed there all night, Friday night. Stayed there. Stay there all day Saturday. Stay there, stay there all night, all night Saturday night. But oh, oh, oh Lord, oh Lord, early, early, early Sunday morning. Things be happen in that tomb. That old tomb begin to shake. That old tomb begin to rock. That old tomb begin to roll. They tell me, they tell me that he got up, that he got up, that he got up. Not only did he get up, not only did he get up, but he got up. He got up uh, with all power, all power, all power, all power in his hand. Power, 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 and Holy Ghost power, 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 that healing power, power to raise the dead, power. To heal the sick, power to do anything, anything but fail. So won't you call him? Won't you call him? Won't you call him? Call him. Call him in the morning. Call him in the evening. Call him. Call him. Call him in the midnight hour. Oh yeah, his line, his line is all. Ways open. Call on that name. That name of Jesus. I said to you to do, saints. I said to you today, saints. Who are you? Who are you going to call other than that sweet name of Jesus? Of Jesus. Call him. Call him. He's waiting just for you. He's waiting, saints. All of you that's going through tough times, hard times, the doors of the church is now open wherever you are. You can still praise God. You can still tell God that you are sick and tired of being sick and tired. Do you want to know him? Do you want to know him? All you got to do is confess today that the Lord Jesus Christ, let him know that you believe that he hung and died on that cross for you and for me. Let him know that you have a change of heart and you want to be one of his. Confess with your mouth that you believe, that you believe not only that he died, not only that he died, but he rose early Sunday morning just for you and me. And let him know that you want to be one of him, that you have a change of heart. You have a change of heart. And you want to be one of his children. Just
just let him know. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he is the Savior. He is the Savior that sets high but looks low. And he can do anything but fail. Or maybe, just maybe, that at one point in your life, you knew about that man, the man called Jesus, your very first love. But somewhere along the way, somewhere along the way, you lost sight of who God really is, and you kind of slipped away, slipped away from that first love. He's still waiting just for you because they tell me that Jesus is married to the backslider. He's still waiting for you. He never left you. He never left you. Just come back. Come back. Come back to Jesus. Because just as he left the 99 to go out and find that one lost sheep, He'll do it for you. Come back. Come back to your first love. And if you're out there somewhere and need prayer, it don't have to be a long prayer, but just look to the hills where you know cometh your help and say, Lord Jesus, I'm calling you this morning. I'm calling that sweet name because no other name I know in the name of Jesus. I'm seeking your help today because I'm having some tough time. I'm going through some tough time. But I know that I know that I know that I know that you can pull me through my situation. You can pick me up out of this mire clay and place my feet on solid ground. He can do it. He can do it. If you just trust him. If you just trust him. I love, I love, I love, I love calling your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. has gone forward. The doors have been opened. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, this day has officially been counted toward you. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his faith rest rude and abide in each and every one of you. Until we meet again, my brothers and sisters and saints, wherever you are, in the absence of the pastor, I just want to thank you this morning for being a part of this service. And until we meet again, be it in person or online, may God keep you, may God bless you, and continue to call on the sweet name of Jesus. And all of God's children said, amen, amen, and thank God. Thank you, saints, wherever you are for being with us today. God bless you, and may God keep you. Amen.